The next uh, talk will also be presented as a video, uh, and it is titled IMU Pre-Integrated Features for Efficient Deep Inertial Odometry. And the presenter is Ruhola Koram Bakht. He's from, he's a robotics researcher at uh, the KNTU in Tehran. We present IMU pre-integrated features for efficient deep inertial odometry. Inertial odometry is a task of inferring the incremental metric movement of a device with respect to its previous pose and based on the information provided by its onboard IMU sensors. These days, IMU sensors are inexpensive and power efficient and can be readily available on various devices and robotic platforms such as drones, autonomous vehicles, and smartphones and watches. In particular, IMUs measure the instantaneous 3D angular velocity and specific forces applied to the device in its own coordinate system. The measurement model for this sensor is shown and relates the measurements to their physical quantities in the real world. The frame W represents the static observer and the coordinate B is attached to the device of interest and we want to track it. MEMS IMUs are affected by various environmental factors such as temperature and body vibrations of the device, which leads to two major measurement errors. First, the physical quantity of interest are corrupted by additive Gaussian noises, which here are shown with the eta g and eta b variables for the gyroscope and accelerometer in the measurement equations. The more challenging source of error is the time varying offset in the measurements. This offset changes with time and it is a variable that depends on temperature and the age of the device and may not be compensated for by a one-time calibration routine. It is also important to note that the measurements are represented in the sensor's local coordinate frame. The rotation matrix from the world to the body coordinate in the measurement model transforms the sum of gravity and motion-induced accelerations from the world's coordinate system to the sensor frame. Based on an ideal measurement model and without the mentioned noise and offset errors, the position, orientation, and the velocity of the device can be theoretically resolved by computing the integral of the measurements given a known initial state. However, in practice, such an approach does not work and the errors injected to the integrator leads to exponentially growing estimation errors. On one hand, we have the additive Gaussian noise that introduces erroneous constants in the integrator that grow as the time goes by. This Gaussian noise also perturbs the estimated rotation matrices from the world to the sensor coordinate system. This error introduces another major issue, which is the gravity leakage. What it essentially means is that the assumed gravity direction in the sensor frame using the estimated and the perturbed orientation matrix no longer coincides exactly with the true gravity in the sensor frame. This mismatch injects further faulty initializations into the integrator that in turn accelerates the growth of the error. In addressing the error accumulation problem, incorporating other modalities is a prevalent technique in the literature. Essentially, constants such as global location, zero velocity detection, or the position of particular features in an image can prevent the blind integration of faulty initial states. However, in a pure inertial odometry setup, we can only rely on particularities and motion patterns in the sensor data that correlate with helpful geometrical states such as stopping or zero velocity conditions. The problem is the modeling of such patterns in a handcrafted manner. Doing so by hand is difficult to formulate and fragile. However, learning such patterns is easy to formulate and more reliable given enough data. In fact, the whole odometry problem can be cast as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning problem. For detecting such events, the input sequence to the model should be long enough to encapsulate them temporally. On the other hand, based on our domain knowledge on the measurement model of an IMU, we know that for accurate integration and motion estimation, 
the integration step and therefore the IMU sampling frequency should be as high as possible. The combined effect of these two requirements is that the input sequences that need to be processed needs to be very long. Learning-based models for such long sequences are challenging to train and require lots of computation cycles per inference. As a result, we are facing a dilemma. Model-based approaches are computationally efficient, but not good standalone choices, while learning-based systems are compute-hungry and challenging to train on very long sequences. To address this problem, we borrow ideas from the Visual Inertial SLAM community. The goal of Visual Inertial SLAM is to jointly infer the camera trajectory and the geometrical structure of the scene. The state-of-the-art classical approaches rely on a factor graph to model the measurement consistency of the visual inertial observations with the optimization states, which are represented as nodes in the factor graph and constrained together by measurement factors. A similar dilemma in this formulation is that incorporating new optimization nodes per IMU sample is extremely computationally expensive and impossible to solve in real time. To address this challenge, Batches of IMU samples between keyframes in the graph are integrated and form single geometrical constraints. This integration-based constraint is defined to be independent from the initial states and are called pre-integrated IMU factors. We import this idea to learning-based inertial odometry problem. With this, we get a domain-aware pre-processing step that transforms the long raw IMU sequences into short features that preserve the important geometrical motion information embedded in the compressed batches. We can then feed these input features to any arbitrary learning model to infer geometrical motion. In order to evaluate this idea, we try to learn inertial odometry based on both raw IMU and pre-integrated features. Our main experiment has been carried out using the KT odometry dataset and for the task of inertial odometry in autonomous vehicles. We chose this domain because it is expected to contain underlying motion patterns and it is governed by a specific non-holonomic kinematic model. These underlying data patterns are suitable for evaluating a learning-based odometry system and the application is attractive because it provides an interceptive ego motion modality for autonomous vehicles, which is independent from the scene. We formulate our learning problem as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence modeling. The input is a batch of 50 PI features corresponding to 500 raw IMU samples for windows of 5 second measurements. The output is a batch of 50 six-dimensional SA3 Lie algebras which map to SE3 transformation matrices that represent the vehicle's motion during time intervals of 0.1 second. We draw inspiration from the double integration form of the IMU pose estimation model and adopt a two-layer by LSTM architecture as our baseline. We also train the same model using raw and a naively don't sampled version of it for comparison purposes. In order to train our models, we use the LiDAR ground truth available in the Kitty odometry dataset. For each inference in the training batch, we map the output of the model to odometry transformations and formulate the geodesic distance between these predictions and the ground truth expected values. Finally, we scale each motion axis using the empirical scale matrix computed as the empirical covariance of odometry steps in the dataset. As expected, we observed a significant training and inference speedup due to the significantly shorter PI features compared to the raw measurements. We also noted that the performance of the model trained using the PI features was significantly higher than a baseline trained using the raw data. We believe that the induced bias in computing the PI features alongside the significantly shorter sequences have helped the model to capture the task distribution more efficiently. In order to verify that the shorter length of the PI features is not the sole reason for its superior performance, we also train the model using a down sampled version of the raw data. We observed that the induced bias in calculating the PI features has indeed been the main reason for the improved performance. Because 
the prediction accuracy of a model trained using only these don't sampled measurements was worse than both baselines trained with raw IMU and PI features. Now that we have seen PI features are effective and efficient for the task of inertial odometry, we change the motion domain to human walking and implement our idea on an embedded microcontroller. Similar to the autonomous vehicles domain, we expect the existence of helpful motion patterns in human walking for better pedestrian inertial odometry. To test this idea and also the effectiveness of PI features for this domain, we use the Oxford IO dataset to train our model. We train a model to predict the incremental motion of a user who holds a phone in various configurations. For easier implementation on the microcontroller, we use a CNN architecture and change the training setup into a sequence to label modeling. Particularly, the output of our model will be the polar vector corresponding to the pedestrian's displacement within two second time intervals. We also take the IONET two-layer by LSTM architecture as the baseline, which is the model introduced by the authors of the Oxford IO dataset. We train this baseline using the PI features and raw IMU data as input. The output of the model is taken to be the polar displacement of the user during each time interval. We compute the training labels using the 6D poses from the Wicon ground truth available in the dataset. The MSE losses for the stride and heading displacements are balanced to ensure stable training of both outputs. Similar to the experiment for the AV domain, we observed a significant training and inference speed up due to the shorter PI sequences compared to the raw measurements. We also noted that the performance of the model trained using the PI features was higher than a baseline trained using raw IMU data, as seen with the AV domain. Interestingly, the embedded implementation based on a highly constrained CNN model with the stacked PI features as input performs comparably to the baseline IONET trained using the raw IMU samples. Furthermore, because of the temporal compression of the PI features, a shallow CNN with the small kernel sizes is able to attend to a larger signal receptive field, which further improves the computational efficiency and helps with the learning dynamics. Finally, we implemented both the pre-integration calculator and the CNN model for an ARM Cortex-M4 microcontroller. We used the Keras framework to define and train our model and then exported it to the stm 32 AI to translate it into compatible binaries. Based on our experiments, one full inference of a two-second motion interval takes five milliseconds to execute. Furthermore, computing each PI feature took only 0.2 milliseconds, which sums up to 4 milliseconds for a full 2-second batch of raw IMU data. This overall 9 millisecond execution time is well below the maximum computation time tolerable for real-time execution. The source codes of our paper are released and can be accessed through the provided QR code. We thank you for your attention and we would be happy to take any questions. We chatted on ResearchGate, so I'm, I'm Sapnil from UCLA. So uh, I saw that you are showing the displacement and heading rate, you know, error, but probably that's not the proper metric to show how well your automatic is doing. So what is the uh, relative translation error and your absolute translation error, like the, you know, position error, you know, maybe in 60 seconds, 120 seconds. So what, if, what is that, error, you know, like what is your RTE and ATE? Yeah, uh, you mean for the auto, uh, autonomous vehicles or for the yeah. pedestrian autonomous? Autonomous vehicle is not that difficult. I'm, I'm more interested in the pedestrian data recording use case. Yeah, for the pedestrian odometry, and the the errors were calculated in uh, based on the time and not the distance. And the, the window of two second intervals uh, to be consistent with the IONET's way of uh, evaluating the model. We just take uh, the two second intervals uh, windows and we compute the heading and um, displacement um, expected versus the ground truth and uh, report the MSE uh, as the odometry error. We do not integrate them to um, provide uh, long-term errors uh, to be consistent with the baseline. Okay, I think uh, probably AT and RT are better metrics. Uh, 
And I think, so Ionet uses the polar coordinate formulation, which you showed, and it has a few problems. So first, how are you solving the singularity issue? I think it was talking, yeah. like, after Ionet, Ronin came, and Ronin, I guess, was talking that Ionet's formulation has a singularity issue in the heading coordinate. So how, how, yes. how, does you, how do you solve that? Yeah. You're absolutely right. The polar coordinate uh, formulation has the singularity problem. That's why our main formulation is based on the autonomous vehicle um, baseline, uh, which outputs the full SE3 outputs. You can, uh, we have also tried uh, training uh, the pedestrian um, baseline using the same six degree of freedom uh, output, which is uh, not um, prone to the singularities that you mentioned. And it works perfectly when you integrate them. Um, but here it is just mentioned for comparison purposes and the singularity issue that you just mentioned uh, exists uh, for the uh, kind of output that we are reporting here. Okay. And one last question is, uh, so in Ionet, we assume that your device is like, not like, your device is like static with respect to the body. But after yeah, Ionet, yeah. there are other data sets which came out where, you know, like, for example, your smartphone, you take it out of the pocket and then you put it back in the pocket. So is your model like robust to those changes? Uh, That's in actually an open uh, issue in the uh, initial dometry domain. Um, it, 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 it is not like you um, you uh, generalize uh, to from one domain to the other because the distribution of gravity direction in uh, various configurations changes dramatically and it uh, distracts the model from the uh, from being accurate, uh, the way uh, we train our model is to is that we train on the same category and we test on the same uh, category, but on the test set uh, a distribution that is not seen during the training time. Um, we have seen that uh, if you feed uh, various configurations to the model, it will be able to uh, pr provide uh, odometry predictions that are accurate for. Uh, all those uh, configurations, but if you go out of distribution, it will not uh, generalize. And that's actually uh, a, a direction for future work to make the model independent from the gravity direction. Uh, and uh, this is an uh, important issue. One idea might be to uh, utilize uh, an, an estimated orientation from uh, classical methods and just remove the gravity direction from the accelerometer, di accelerometer readings and then use the pre-integration uh, to compute the pre-i features. And that would m uh, make it, in, in theory at least, more robust to that uh, category variations. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Time for one or two more questions. Um, I, I would actually have a question. How did you choose for the compression rate of your PI features? I mean, you use 10 uh, or, or 20, but did you try out, did you do some optimization there? Mm, we haven't done any optimizations, but the interesting observation was that we could um, easily go to 20 and 30, and um, they all provided uh, sufficiently good results. But the choice is coming from the, the baselines uh, that we were comparing against for the uh, autonomous vehicle um, domain. We chose the 10 because the frames were provided every 10 IMU samples. And the ground truth was, were also provided at that rate. And we wanted to maximize the number of our training samples. So we went for 10. And for the pedestrian odometry, our baseline Ionet uh, reported uh, running its models with a stride of 10 uh, and to be able to compare and compare more um, efficiently with that baseline, we went also for 10. Uh, but in the previous version of uh, our um, research, which is also available on um, archive, there is an experiment where we um, do um, with other uh, comparison uh, factors, and they also provide sufficiently good results. The trade-off is that when you increase the comparison, you also are filtering the high-frequency contents from the IMU data. And these high-frequency contents can help the model to uh, distinguish uh, the particular patterns that can be inferred from those uh, high-frequency contents. And um, our theory is that if you uh, go for higher comparisons and remove those contents, you need to incorporate them in some sense. 
and um, for, our, for our future direction, we are incorporating spectral features alongside PI features to be able to actually compress uh, the PI features even further and maintain the high frequency contents. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for being available late at night for us. And thank you. Thank you for having me. And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is Edge Impulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are ARM, Deep Light, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintiant. Uh, Platinum sponsor, Analog Devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, Clickatech, Latent AI, NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics, really. Very diverse company, great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny email forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors, PhotoHub, MicroAI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Synsense, Exmos. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Emza, uh, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, ImagiMob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, PixArt, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rixen, SAP, Stream Analyze, Texel, and Google. So we are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward.